welcome back. If you hear any background noise, James is in there with Buster. You know, we live here. <laughs> it's, it's actually Sunday and it's it's been, I'm already feeling emotional about this week. This is a very special week, but it's also a very hard week. Um, just to know what Jesus is about to encounter this week, you know, so many years ago, just, I don't know, there's something about it, like, I'm finding the closer I get to the Lord, the more intense my relationship gets with Him, the more that this week really, really, it started off a few years ago that it was Good Friday really got to me, you know, just the tears constantly. But now I'm finding, even on this day, this Palm Sunday, knowing that he was going to his death and he knew he was going to die. He knew that that was the only chance we would have. I just... Excuse me, I'm gonna go get a tissue and I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for waterproof mascara. I don't even know why I even bother. This week is probably, would be a good no makeup week because of the tears that's gonna flow. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure so many of y'all are right there with me, feeling the same thing, can totally understand where I'm coming from. And, uh, wow. Mm. Didn't expect this, I don't know why. I didn't, but anyway, I'm going to try to compose myself and pull myself together so that we can do our little devotion from our little book. Y'all know <laughs> my cover is ripped off, but I love this little book. Um, you know, this is just one of the little gifts that God put in my path. Um, he took several things that I love and combined them. He took my love of thrifting, my love of old books, combined them and blessed me with such a beautiful gift that I'm so fortunate to be able to share with so many of y'all. So if you have this little book, let me see what we're going to be reading from. I have no idea how God is going to minister to us, but here we are. Um, let's see. So many we've already read. We're always, okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. If you have this little book. Sorry about that. The neighbor's all, I have my, let me close the window. Jeez. Wow. So many distractions. That probably means we're going to have a very good devotion this morning because something's trying to hinder it, but we're not going to let it. <laughs> the neighbor's dog is barking. James is there. I've asked him to kind of turn down his stuff while I'm in here, but here we go. If you have this little book, we're going to be reading from page 92 and 93 under the grouping, The Mavericks, and the topic is The Suffering. Oh boy. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> right now, Lord, my faith in you is shaky. The light that sometimes floods me with your presence is dim. Today, I saw sorrow, suffering, deprivation and I am haunted by these things. I cannot root them out of my mind and concentrate on your love. Why, I keep asking, why is it that you can be so good to me and let these, your children, remain in want? I saw a little girl who couldn't go to school because she didn't have a pair of shoes. I saw an ugly old woman dying of cancer in a hovel overrun by rats. I saw a boy who had lost his eyesight and both legs in, in war. Where are you, God? As I unlock my door and enter my quiet house, how can you be here with me, waiting like a gentle lover to listen and to encourage and comfort me? Are you in the heart of the old woman? Are you telling the boy who will never see his sweetheart to buck up, things are going to be all right? What are you saying to the little girl who is crying because she can't go to school? How can she understand? God, my heart and soul are sick. All I can say is help them, help them. Draw as near to them as you seem at times to be to me. Bless their existence, bless their wants, bless their minds and bodies, bless their suffering to some purpose that right now I simply cannot see. 
Wow. It's deep. Um, I don't understand either. I don't. I have no black and white answer for why things happen the way they have or do and why they happen to some and not others. Why some just seem to just have it all and some just seem to be barely scraping the bottom of the barrel. I don't know. I don't understand. I have no answers. Um, and sometimes we question God and he may or may not reveal why. Um, it all goes back to how many knows what I'm about to say, his ways and thoughts being higher than ours. I don't know. I know that in my situation, I have seen some that I just, I, I can't understand why or how God would allow things. Why, how, like how much more can they take and just keep going? I know people in my life that, that I know well that I, I, I question that, you know. I see some in my life that seem to just have no regard for God at all and they seem to just continually prosper. But are they really? Are they really? You know, when she says, you know, my heart and soul are sick, all I can say is help them, help them. Draw as near to them as you seem at times to be to me. Maybe they don't want that. Maybe they don't want that. Bless their existence, bless their wants, bless their minds and bodies, and bless their suffering to some point that right now I simply cannot see. <sighs> That's so deep, y'all. Are you in the heart of the old woman, the one that she seen that was dying of cancer and a hovel overrun by rats? We don't know. We don't know her relationship with God and maybe the very fact that she's dying with cancer is soon to be an answer prayer to healing her completely, to getting her out of that. We don't know. It's so deep. And the boy that, you know, lost his eyesight and legs in the war. I don't understand why that has to happen. But maybe the Lord seen further down the line that had he kept his eyesight and his legs, that his soul would be lost. If I make it to heaven with all of my body parts and appendages in order and I still have my sight, wonderful. But if having all of that will hinder me from making it to heaven, is it worth it? No. Where are you, God, as I unlock my door and enter my quiet house? How can you be here with me waiting to listen and to courage and comfort me? Who's to say he's not with that lady dying of cancer in a hovel of rats, overrun by rats? We don't know that he's not with her. We don't know why the little girl couldn't go to school because she didn't have shoes. We don't know why she don't have shoes, but we don't know that she's, he's not there with her, comforting her. We don't know that. We're looking with physical eyes and we can't see the spiritual realm and we don't know what God is doing. And I understand, I understand that all we have is the physical eyes and that's what we see with and and, you know, we see all these situations and we don't understand why they have to happen. But aren't you glad? I know I'm glad I'm not God. I'm glad I'm not God and have to make some decisions that he has to make. I'm glad. And we don't under, we will never understand his ways, all of them. He may bless us with some insight. And then again, he may not. And he owes us no explanation of why all of this is happening. We weren't the ones that died on that cross for all mankind. 
He did. We weren't the ones that took the stripes and carried that cross up a hill to be mocked and ridiculed. He did. And although human nature in me does question God sometimes, and I, I know that he understands our humanity and he understands that we have questions. And I don't think in any way he punishes us for asking questions, but ultimately he owes us no explanation. He is the one that died for that little girl with no shoes. He is the one that died for that lady that was dying with cancer in a hovel overrun by rats. He is the one that died for that boy that lost his eyesight and legs in the war. I didn't. Does that mean I can't have compassion and pray for them and, you know, be concerned? No. But ultimately, he knows all and he sees everything about the little girl, about the woman, about the boy. He sees and knows things about them that I will never see or know. And I think he understands, like she says, you know, her faith is shaky and the light that sometimes floods. She says, the light that sometimes floods me with your presence is dim. Today I saw sorrow, suffering, and deprivation. Well, the fact that she's feeling all this lets me know that her heart is full of love and compassion. And that comes from the Lord. It's through the Lord that we have such love and compassion for one another. That's what's wrong with the world now. There's so much hate and discord because they don't have the love of Jesus inside of them. Where they love their neighbor and they love their fellow man. The fact that she feels all of this lets me know she has the love of Jesus in her. And the fact that she's haunted by the things that she can't root them out of her mind or concentrate on his love. Well, you are. You just don't realize it. She is concentrating on her, his love by feeling all of these things because if she didn't, feel the love of Jesus, she would not have the compassion and the sorrow for her fellow man. Just my take on it. This was a deep one, and we may not always understand God's ways. There's a lot in my life, current situations, past situations that are going on in my life and my family that I do not understand. I do not understand how or why. And I may never understand how or why, but you know what? I know the one who knows all is in it. I may not see it. I may not know what he's doing on the other end, but I know he's in it. And I know that he is loving and compassionate and full of mercy. So full of mercy. And every day that we wake up, that mercy renews. And I love him. And I trust him. I trust him when I, even when I see all of these things and I don't understand why, I trust him. Yes, I can pray for them. But I still trust that he is doing and knows what's best. That he's handling it. And what I love about God is it is on an individual basis. He does not group us all together and say, okay, this group gets this. This group gets this. It's on an individual basis. And he will handle each individual case as he sees fit. And that falls into his perfect will. And remember, this is a tough one, but remember, he will never force himself on or in a situation where he is not wanted or been invited. And if this woman who's dying of cancer in a hobble overrun by rats has told him, I don't want you, I don't need you, and curses his name, 
I'm not saying she did. I'm just saying he's not going to impose himself on her. That does not mean he don't love her. And that does not mean that she was on his mind when he died on that cross. That just means he respects her wishes. It may break his heart, but he will respect that. And that sometimes is what happens, sadly. They they curse him. They don't want no, nothing to do with him. No part of him. Don't appreciate him. Don't love him. And yes, we still need to pray for them that they can receive and know and love and appreciate how wonderful he is and to know that he loved them so much that he died for them and us. Oh, Ooh, this was so deep, y'all, and I guess very fitting for such a week. Um, such a week as this. I pray that you feel the love of God and know how much he loves you, that he willingly went through everything. He willingly died on that cross for each and every one of us. He loves us that much. And I hope that if no other time, but this week especially, that you will take time, set aside, and really reflect on just what he went through for each and every one of us. I will never be worthy, but I will forevermore be grateful and thank him for everything that he has done for me for dying on that cross for me, for taking those stripes for me, for drinking from that bitter cup, for being mocked and cursed so that I would have a chance, a chance. I love him so much. I thank you for being here with me. And yes, I'm a bit emotional, but I don't know how a person who really knows the love of God and is in true relationship with him could not be emotional at such a time as this. I will not apologize and I will not be ashamed. I'm grateful for the soft heart because there was a time in my life this heart was hard and this week meant nothing to me except, oh, a day off, a new outfit, new shoes, party. Not anymore. It takes on a whole new meaning when you're in relationship with the one who did it all for you. I love each and every one of y'all. I pray you have a blessed day. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.